Hi, you've clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Thursday, June 15th, 2017. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the information from the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service. Well, we have our first area of disturbed weather in the tropics to watch this month in the Atlantic, uh, manifest by this large area of thunderstorms you can see developing near Central America and the Western Caribbean. There's actually a second area being monitored by the NHC as well, this tropical wave kind of on the edge of the satellite view here at a southerly latitude that, which will be moving quickly toward the Trinidad, Tobago, Venezuela area within four to five days and some models have actually indicated that this could try to develop which would be quite rare for June. It's only happened four times east of the Lesser Antilles during the month of June in known history uh, because normally conditions are quite unfavorable out here for tropical waves until at least July uh, most years. Um, so given climatology alone, odds of this developing are probably quite low, and NHC is only giving you low odds for now, uh, but it might have a shot given how far south it is, so we'll keep an eye on it just in case um, it'll be in this area within about four to five days. Uh, the rest of this video will be dedicated to this area of disturbed weather near Central America and the Western Caribbean, the long advertised surge of monsoonal moisture. Uh, if we look at the water vapor imagery from the excellent NASA satellite site here, uh, we'll see a, an upper trough over the Gulf of Mexico, which is um, aiding the development of large-scale convection to its southeast uh, over the Western Caribbean, and uh, really over this whole large area extending into the Eastern Pacific. And this is uh, the beginning of a slow march northward of deep moisture here um, in the Eastern Pacific, starting to creep northward along with the monsoon gyre that will soon develop over Central America. And as we watch this uh, region, where, of course, the first thing you look for is any kind of spin uh, within these uh, thunderstorms to see if anything's going to try to develop and start spinning away here, you won't find very much. Um, if you look at the surface wind, it's easterly, uh, southeast trades coming through all this convection in the Caribbean. If you look down toward Nicaragua, well, guess what? The wind is still easterly at the surface. And uh, if you're looking for any kind of rotation, you're not going to find it unless you look all the way down here in the eastern Pacific, where there's a very weak right now, broad, um, quote-unquote monsoon low sitting here south of Guatemala. This with time as the convection to its northeast begins to lower pressures will start drawing the low toward the northeast and eventually you'll end up with a broad low that has shifted into the Gulf of Honduras uh, to the east of the Yucatan Peninsula within two to three days. And this will be a very slow process. Again, two to three days, nothing is going to develop within here fast. Uh, this whole thing is best termed a big mess. And uh, that is what it is. We have a lot of stuff going on here. You can see outflow boundaries being um, expand, expanding outward from decaying thunderstorms that go up and then come back down. Because this whole area was pretty dry until this convection started uh, about a day ago. And uh, so there's a lot of preconditioning going on here in the thermodynamics where thunderstorms go up, they come down, and it takes a while to moisten the entire troposphere and uh, make this area more favorable for sustained convective activity. And we have strong trade winds coming in, and we even have uh, what is probably a von Karman vortex coming off of Colombia here, even uh, paired up with a little bit of a thunderstorm on its southeast side. Believe it or not, this is a vorticity feature which uh, both the European and GFS have forecast to occur and come off, move northwest, and get involved here with all the stuff that's going on to its northwest. So uh, there, there's a lot of details going on here, a lot of features, a lot of mess. It's, it's really hard to get a handle on this early, and uh, that's the first message that really you should take away from this is that it is early, and there's a lot that could happen from this. It takes a long time for tropical storms to develop out of these messes, and often they don't at all. So we're going to keep a close eye on this. Lots of rain in this area in general near the Yucatan Peninsula and extending toward even portions of the Greater Antilles, Jamaica, Cuba, the Caymans, um, etc., Central America, all getting lots of enhanced rainfall here relative to seasonal averages. Um, but whether or not a tropical storm forms remains to be seen. Uh, if we look at the steering pattern out to day four, this is the GFS showing a trough coming across the Midwest of the U.S., uh, a weakness over the Gulf. We have this old low. You can see the, the upper trough we were talking about. That whole thing eventually cuts off back here, as we can see on the GFS. And we'll start backing away toward Mexico, allowing this ridge over the southwestern U.S. to try to stick its nose out over Texas and Louisiana. And the idea here is that on some models, including the European, this ridge kind of noses out like this. So you have an H here, big high pressure in the mid-levels, and then whatever tropical activity we have here gets trapped under the nose of the ridge and moves west toward the western Gulf of Mexico and Mexico itself uh, during uh, early to mid part of next week.
Um, however, there is some disagreement right now with the GFS, uh, which keeps a slightly stronger weakness in the ridge here between this ridge to the west and this ridge to the east over the Gulf Coast. What this can allow is a light steering flow toward the north coming out of the Northwest Caribbean, and the GFS actually favors uh, more northward directed moisture and activity toward Florida during the mid-range, and we'll show you some of that in a second. Uh, this is the European, or the GFS rather, a low level flow at 850 millibars showing vorticity in yellow here. A broad low set up just east of the Yucatan on Sunday morning. If we look at the European at the same time, pretty similar stuff here. You know, broad low or trough um, coming out of the Eastern Pacific and ending up here, as we talked about, within about three days. So nothing is developed here on the models, still pretty broad, and that's likely how it's going to be by the weekend. Um, you have to start wondering about how much land interaction it will have here as well that can inhibit development but assuming it's over the water here the question from there is uh, will it develop and where where might it go uh, these two models are pretty similar at Sunday morning but if you go out to Tuesday morning we start to see big differences the GFS has this elongated trough let me draw that a little better there uh, with the focus of activity toward the North Gulf Coast and lots of moisture coming into Florida on the eastern side here. This is a very different solution from the European, which has a completely different, um, still broad, but more circular, symmetric, um, broad low that is moving west-northwestward across the Yucatan into the Bay of Campeche and eventually toward uh, the eastern coast of Mexico. And why the big difference in the models? Well, part of it could be due to the steering. Um, again, the GFS has a slightly stronger, more pronounced weakness over the North Gulf Coast in the ridge. The European has an ever so slightly stronger ridge bridge here, which might help direct this more west compared to the GFS, uh, which allows um, uh, the convection to follow the mid-level steering flow northward toward Florida, uh, but that may only be half of the story. Um, something else that might be going on here, as so we look at the uh, day three low-level flow again on the GFS, you'll see our broad low again. Uh, note the trade wind belt coming out of the Caribbean and then curving northwest across Cuba. You'll see this line of yellow here. This is indicating the shear vorticity zone, basically marking the southwestern flank of the trade wind belt. If we compare that to the European at the same time, note where the band of yellow is. It's offset about 100 miles to the southwest of where it is on the GFS. Why does this matter? Well, it, it tells you that the trade winds are farther southwest on the Euro, and the reason for that may be that pressures are higher on the European in this region I've encircled near Jamaica, Cuba, and Hispaniola compared to the GFS. Uh, on the GFS, the trade winds um, are directed farther north faster, which, is allow which allows convection and moisture and whatnot to get into the southeastern Gulf of Mexico quicker than the European, which gives all that activity a better chance to move north before the ridge comes in from Texas and traps it and forces it the other way, like it does on the European. Why might this happen? Well, it might happen because uh, there might be a difference in convection during the next two to three days on both models. If the GFS has more convection near and south of Jamaica, out in the Central Caribbean, then it can allow pressures to lower just a little bit more, force the trade winds to the north faster, and allow some of uh, this moisture to get redirected in the southeastern Gulf of Mexico compared to the Euro, which might have less convection and thus everything gets confined a little bit farther to the west. There is some evidence to support this if we look at the total uh, precipitation from the GFS for the next three days. Everything in purple here is above two inches in the Caribbean, and I can't show you the European for comparison, uh, but I have looked at it, and there is a, a little bit less precip near and south and southeast of Jamaica on the European, and uh, this could indicate that in the grand scheme there is maybe less convection and less latent heat release in the European out in the Central Caribbean, which uh, would explain some of the differences that we see in the flow evolution between the two models. The reason I'm telling you all this is because uh, these little details can matter a lot in terms of the ultimate outcome of the situation, and uh, sometimes the GFS does get a little overdone with convection in this area of the Caribbean, so in general I would tend to lean toward the European here, uh, but there uh, you know, there's there's no reason to rule out uh, moisture streaming into the eastern Gulf of Mexico instead. Even some of the European ensemble members do still bring some of the activity toward the north. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that, but the bottom line is uh, it's still several days away, away before we know what's going to happen in the Gulf. Uh, we're talking about five days out here. A lot can change in that time. A little forecast details that are really hard to latch on to with uh, all the stuff that's going on here. Uh, there's really just so much that can happen with a broad area of convection, and the models will struggle and will likely disagree for at least a couple more days before we start to get a good handle on what might come of this. Uh, we may not even get a tropical storm. Uh, if we do, we'll certainly keep an eye out for it, but heavy rain is likely to be the main story here, both for Central America and the Caribbean, but also 
farther north once some of this moisture starts getting into the Gulf, whether it's the east side or the west side, somebody's going to get wet here uh, during the course of next week. So that will be the big story. And if there's any tropical development, uh, we'll see it coming uh, because this whole process will be slow. Nothing's going to come out of nowhere here and surprise anybody. Uh, this kind of uh, situation takes a long amount of time to organize, and we'll keep a close eye on it. Uh, National Hurricane Center currently gives it a 50% chance as of the 2 p.m. update today for uh, tropical development during the next five days. And again, that, that low rider wave here has a low chance, I believe 20% from them over the next four to five days. So we'll keep an eye on these two regions, and uh, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.